Hi guys, welcome back for another video. I'm Jess and I'm one of the creative designers here at Sizzix. Today I have an invite and an envelope to go alongside it to show you guys. So I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna be able to achieve through this video. So I'm gonna show you how to put together all of the invite bits with those lovely birds, and then even how to make your own envelope to go alongside it with our amazing scoreboard and trimmer, which is brand new. So I'm gonna show you how to use that and also how to stamp the design in the center using two of our brand new chapter three designs. So this is Sweet Birds and Summer Blossoms. So that is everything. We're gonna run through it step by step. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with that invite section. Um, just because this is the first section that you wanna do, we're gonna to need to know the shape and size of this for our envelope for reference. So we're going to start with the invite um, and what I've actually done is I have pre kind of printed all of my information onto a white piece of card. So any information that you want for your invite, you want to print that off um, because it's going to be quite tiny writing. We're probably not going to be able to die cut that. But if you do want larger sections, you could um, die cut them with a certain alphabet. But most of it I have printed and then I have pre cut all of my pieces out just to save me some time. Um, using that sweet birds die set. So think about your color scheme, think about um, what colors you want your birds to be, your flowers, your foliage, things like that. And then we're gonna think about our composition as well. So I've got all my little bits all cut out here. So I've got a mixture of flowers, foliage, and then my lovely little uh, love birds. And then I've also got this heart. So this is using our heart framelits die. So just our essential heart framelits. And I've cut the largest one from some of our gold opulent cardstock. And this is gonna be kind of the background element and then I'm gonna work on top of that. So I'm gonna have that slightly offset just to match this. I'm gonna have my original just as reference to show you guys. And I'm just gonna place this bit here. So I'm thinking where that's gonna be. I'm gonna use my double-sided adhesive and I'm just going to place that roughly where I want it and don't worry about that kind of overhang because we're going to trim that off so I did reference um, at the beginning I've got it down here our amazing scoreboard and trimmer um, this is brand new and I'm obviously going to show you guys how to use it to make your envelope but since I've got it I may as well I'm going to spin that round may as well use it to chop off this side as well so I'm going to line it up I can't even butt it against that ruler and then make sure everything's lined up to the side of the edge of the invite and then run that blade along there and then you get that perfect cut. So that's just one element of the scoreboard and trimmer that is a trimmer element and I'm going to show you the kind of scoring elements and all the extra little fun gadgets as we go through. But I have now my kind of background piece and then I'm going to place these on top. So Obviously, like I said, I have pre-cut all of mine using my trusty Big Shot. You can use any of our die cutting machines. You probably know how these kind of cut and how well they cut and how they work um, if you've watched some of our other videos. But this is a thinlets die. It cuts with all of our machines. So if you've got one, no problem. And then we can start to arrange certain bits. So you have little extra wing elements. So I can pop those on. Um, here we've got our little foliage elements I'm going to kind of place underneath my little birds and then I'm going to place little flower elements I think I'm going to sculpt these using our paper sculpting kit and then I'm even going to take some of our gold sequins and beads with our intricate craft tool set and place some of those on with some glue as well so I think I'm just going to carry on with this until we have it all finished just like this one
Okay, so I have fully replicated my original design. I'm happy with all the composition, even if it's slightly different, I think we've still got the overall feel. Um, and our video, um, editor James actually made a really good point that this shows fantastic batch making in the sense that if you are making invites for a wedding or a party whatever it might be you're going to make multiples so have your original one make sure you're fully happy with it and then just have it off to the side as you're making the next one and then you'll be able to match everything up pretty much exact um, and it was dead easy like as soon as you've got all the pieces really easy to place down and then even with that intricate craft tool set you can just pop all those little sequins on to give it the finishing touch and you can just print out your backing so you've got loads of them to go at. I didn't even change the names on this one. I kept it really simple. Um, so it's literally just printing them off, cutting all the pieces out, and then replicating for your batch making with your invite. So now we've got that all sorted, I'm going to bring back our amazing scoreboard and trimmer. And I'm going to make an envelope to fit this. So I've actually already pre-cut my um, cardstock down to the correct size. So in your kind of scoreboard and trimmer box, you'll also get a little booklet. So you'll get your little booklet and that shows you all in depth of how to make your envelope if you're struggling. It also shows you multiple different other things like your boxes and things like that. Um, so that runs it through step by step if you forget, but you can always reference this video or another one. Um, and then you'll also get this little table. So it's centimeters on one side, inches on the other, and then you just measure up your invite or your piece of card, and then um, it'll give you some numbers, and then you can get your card stock that is the perfect size to make your envelope for your desired um, size. So I have that all trimmed down to size, so I just measured it on both sides and trimmed it. And then what you wanna do is I'm just going to move the ruler to the 45 degree angle and then I'm going to place all of the score lines in there so it's super easy to do guys anybody can do it um, and it's just really easy to achieve and then you can have personalized envelopes for all of your invites or cards or whatever it might be so line that up there and then score that There we are, I've got all of my score lines in there now. So I can place that back up there. My scoring tool can go back underneath. And then what you wanna do is you wanna use these punch tools so you can round off your corners using this tool. There's actually two um, cuts there, so depending on which ones you want. So I'm gonna place that there. I'm gonna put the card up into the corner and then press, and then you get your kind of curved edge. I'm gonna do that on all four corners. And then this little envelope punch here, you can take it out or you can leave it in, it's completely up to you, but you just wanna measure it up. So where these two score lines cross, you've got a little kind of triangle. You've got, you should have four of them all the way around. And then we're just gonna take this and it has a little kind of triangle in there. We're gonna measure that up. You can see the little lines on there as well, so you know exactly where to put it. And then we're gonna punch that. And then you have your dip there. So that's gonna be kind of where you have your corners of your envelope. So I'm gonna cut those out. Okay, and then place that back. So I'm just gonna move this out of the way now. And then we have our basically our flat envelope and then you can start to fold along those score lines really simply and then you can decide where your top is and where your bottom is so I think I'm gonna have these ones as my bottom so I'm gonna have those two folded in and then this one on top and you can see how already that should be the perfect size to fit my invite in. So I'm just going to place some adhesive just on here and then stick that down. Mm -hmm. 
And there we have our finished envelope that fits our invite in perfectly. It's the perfect size. Just shimmy that in. But you can make it slightly bigger if you're worried about it um, not fitting, but that fits really snug and perfect. So how quick and easy was that to make? And then you can completely customize your envelope for your invite. Now we are going to move on to decorating our inside of our envelope. So I'm gonna get out my um, stencil and stamp tool and all my stamps, and then we're gonna start decorating the inside. Okay, so I've set up all of my stencil and stamp tool bits and for the center of the envelope, I've actually pre-cut one of our envelope liners. Now, this is using one of our previous envelope liner dies. Um, we've done a couple of these in the past. You may have one already in your collection, but they are still available on our website. Um, and usually they come in two sizes. So this is the larger size, just because I felt like that fit on the inside of my envelope really nicely and we still have a nice edging around there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna create like a stamped pattern almost using that Summer Blossoms stamp. And we're just gonna layer this up with some of our Distress inks and just kind of create a fun pattern. It doesn't have to be exact or precise. Um, doesn't have to be a complete repeat pattern. Just kind of fill in where you want. How I tend to do this, I tend to use um, the foliage pieces first because I want those kind of underneath. And then I'll go for the larger flower elements and then I'll finish off with those kind of um, uh, like drawn elements over the top for that extra detail. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of examples of how to achieve this. So I'm just going to peel off a couple of the foliage kind of pieces and kind of think about where you want them. We can take off these flowers as well just for reference of where we want things. So just kind of map it all out or map at least a couple of pieces out. I'm going to take that off actually so we can show you. So say I want this bit up here. Don't be afraid to go off the edges as well if your um, kind of composition calls for it. So if we think about, okay, so I'm gonna have one down there and then I'm potentially gonna have one up here. So I might have that one up there. So just think about your composition and play around. So if I'm quite happy with that little bit to go off first, I'm gonna remove those flowers because they're gonna go on second. Then I'm gonna place my stamp in plate on and then pick them all up and then choose your color. So I'm gonna use a mixture of some of the greens. So this is crushed olive distressing and then I've also got rustic wilderness and just press that onto the stamp kind of directly. You can go back in with your darker color if you want to and just like do a little bit of an ombre effect on some of them. You might want some of them all of the darker color, whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. And then what I like to do is I like to go in with just some water in a spray bottle and give it a little bit of a spritz, just so those colors all kind of uh, mesh together. And then I've got some blue roll and I just wipe up the background of that stamp plate, just so it doesn't get onto my card. And then press that back. and you'll see how the colors kind of mesh together. And you have your foliage. Now, if you're still not happy, if you want to add more color, you can then add more color to your stamps, go back in because it's all perfectly aligned. We've got our sticky grid sheet base keeping this in place. And then these are also going to stay in place as well. So once you've done that, we're then going to move on to the flowers. And then lastly, the little edging uh, kind of detail pieces as well, but you want to completely cover your envelope liner until you're happy.
So I'm just going to stop there for now because I just wanted to show you guys all the kind of layering elements and how you create it. But you want to cover the whole thing um, until you're kind of happy with the design and everything like that. And then literally all you want to do is you want to place some adhesive along the back. And then you just want to slot it into your envelope. There's two little score lines, little cut lines here that you can just line up with the fold of the envelope. Make sure that's fully aligned. And then you have that decorated envelope liner as well. So obviously if you kept going and you did the whole thing, you'd end up with something like that. But you can see how I showed you before and just slots your invite in perfectly and then you can close it up and you have a really gorgeous personalized invite for a wedding, a party, whatever it might be. But also in the same breath, you can take this envelope with this liner and you can have it for just a regular card that you're gifting to somebody for whatever occasion it might be. But just using those different techniques of making that envelope and having that stamped background with the liner. And then obviously, if you are making invites, you have the kind of elements there with those sweet birds as well. So I hope you've enjoyed following along with me today. I hope you've enjoyed um, seeing some new techniques with the stencil and stamp, seeing that amazing scoreboard and trim it, and how easy it is to make your envelopes along with your invites. Um, but that is everything from me today, guys. Um, if you do recreate this or anything that I've shown you, maybe you try out a different technique, um, something like that, then please share any makes that you have with us um, across all of our socials. We love to see it and, and we love to share um, what you guys have been up to as well. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the next one. I think that's everything. But until then, stay safe and keep crafting. Thanks. Bye.